So, in Skull and Bones, we have gone through a Padawakang build, we've done a Brigantine build, and now we're going to do a Snow build, and that is until I can get my hands on enough pieces of eight to do a Sandbuck build. And I want to say that this Snow is the tank of the game, and I am yet to be sunk in both PvE and PvP with this build. So starting off, it's specialised in bracing against incoming damage, and it's got a perk called Tenacity. It recovers its brace strength by 4% per second while bracing. It increases the brace strength by 50% and the recovery by 150%. Then when it comes to the stats, it has 50,000 health. It's got 25,000 brace strength. It's only got a trimming speed of 13 knots, but I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about that in a moment. And the cargo is gigantic with 80,000. So if we set sail, the thing I want to talk about, the speed of it, is if I go full speed and start trimming, we're going to go up to a max of 13 knots. And when it comes to the brig, that's got a top speed of 18 knots. But what I figured is, because I've been using this snow for a little while now, when it comes to the brig and you're head on with wind, so if I completely face the wind here, I would drop to like 12 to 14 knots. So I'm pretty much going the same speed as this. Whereas in the snow, even when you've got wind coming towards you, it doesn't really affect you anywhere near as much. But when it comes to being defensive and keeping your speed, this does a lot better than, like, you're not going to have anywhere near as much of a penalty as what you get in the brig. I mean, technically, you're still going a little bit faster in the brig, but I just, I think it's really, really cool that the ships have that difference. And now if we go back and we disembark again, I want to show you guys exactly how I've got this set up. So the thing to remember with this is this is a tank. This doesn't specialize in DPS. So if we go into manage ship, I'll explain all of it. We'll start with the weapons. We have the Great Spring Old 2, the ballista on the front. And the reason I have this one is because if you draw the ballista further, you get greater power and range. But it's got a tearing 2 on it. So it's really, really good for increasing damage against sails. But this is really, really good because you can get a range of up to 900 meters. So you can snipe enemy players with this. And then if we go into our left slot, I have the Zamzama 2 because it renders ships vulnerable to crew attacks. And I'll explain exactly why we want to do that in this ship. Uh, we have Zamzama 3 on the right hand side. I got lucky enough to get that from a legendary treasure map doing the uh, cutthroat cargo hunt. And then on the back, I've got the Fire Bombard 3 because I just absolutely love it. The fire damage is incredible. And then in our auxiliary, I've got the Leopold 2. I'm trying to work on number 3, but I'm trying to prioritize the Sandbuck at the same time. The reason I've got this is because as well as causing explosive damage, it also causes flooding. So that is it for the weapons. The armor I'm running at the moment is the Royal Custodian. There's a video on the channel if you guys don't have that. And then in terms of the furniture, this is where it gets juicy with this ship. We have the Scrapper Station. You restore 8,000 hull health after a crew attack. So when it comes to using the Zamzama, like you've got to be really, really close, but using the Zamzama at short range is going to help build up that vulnerability for crew attacks. And then once you use a crew attack, you are going to restore 8,000 health. Then when it comes to slot 2, I've got Maintenance Forge, so that if I have any severe damage whilst I'm out of combat, I restore it. Then in the next slot, I've got the Double Planked Harlot, so it increases our max health by 5%. And then I have the Ballista Works to increase my Elemental Damage Multiplier of the Ballista by 19%. So over on the right hand side of the map now, we're at the Necropolis. I want to show you guys some combat because this ship is so much different to anything else in the game. Your priority with this is bracing pretty much. You don't want to be doing much else. So I recommend not trimming whilst you're in combat. Just keep it on the, uh, like the top speed without trimming. You're still going to get a good nine knots from it, but you're going to deal damage as well. Like You are going to get decent damage out of this, but your entire goal with this is to stay alive. You've got 50,000 health, obviously bumped up to 52,500 with, uh, with the bit of furniture on that we've got on to increase our health. So what I do when I start combat is I use my mortar and I attack. These ships are like level 8 over here. And then as soon as that lands, what I'm going to do is because this ship's going to start moving, you'll see it's just put its sails down. So if we just keep firing with the ballista at the sails, you will eventually tear the sails so that they can't move. And then you want to get in at the side with your Zamzama, and you want to keep firing because then it gives you the ability to fire your muskets and you deal a lot of damage. Like you'll see there's over 10,000 damage dealt there. 
And then if you get in front of the ship, you can use your fire bombards to get fire damage on there. So you've got flooding, fire, you're doing crew attacks. Like there's a lot of statuses going on. So this is really, really good. And when it comes to PvP, like it's so good against enemy players. They don't know what to expect from it because you're not like prioritizing your DPS. And then I could have boarded right there, which would have given us 8,000 health. But obviously the musket firing gives you 8,000 health as well. So if I, if I heal up so we get to max health, I'm probably going to take a little bit of damage. If I slow down as well, I stop trimming. Like we've got a lot of ships after us here. I need to get closer, but you'll see I've taken some damage. So if I try and sit still, if I can get close enough, I can fire the muskets. And if you look at our health bar... And there we go. So we've done the crew boarding. We're going to get extra loot and everything from it. But well, I mean, not necessarily. That ship didn't give us any. But you'll see that green bit, our health just went back up. So this ship is incredible for its survivability. And that's why you want that major furniture on that restores 8,000 health for crew attacks. And then put on the Zamzamas, which are going to help get the uh, enemy ships vulnerable. And if you look at the health, look at the bottom left. Because we fired the muskets, boom, 8,000 health come back. So it's really, really, really good for crew attacks, for boarding, for firing the muskets, and just for keeping yourself alive. Like, yeah, they're not the strongest ships in the game, but we've just taken on like a full-on fleet of like four or five ships. So it might not be the fastest, but it's 100% the strongest. And once you've got it set up like this, you're pretty much not going to have any trouble at all. The only thing I would really worry about with the ship is making sure that you've got enough food so that you can keep recovering your stamina. Because your stamina is so, so important. If you run out of stamina and you can't brace, you're going to take a lot of damage very quickly. But whilst you have stamina and you're bracing, like your brace is coming back 4% every second, you can just brace after brace. You can take a lot of damage without actually losing health just by bracing in this ship because it does so well with it. So that's exactly how I've got it set up. The fire bombard on the back. You've got the Zamzamas on the side. You've got the Ballista on the front. You've got the Leopold Mortar in the middle. And you're just keeping your stamina up, bracing, dealing damage when you can, tearing sails, flooding, fire damage. It's an incredible time using this ship. So that is going to do it for my snow build on Skull and Bones. What we're going to do is leave that video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about the build in the comments. I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. Thank you for watching.